Ooh. All right, let's see how all this works. Getting back to the usual. Of course, there are trucks going by because that's just my life. That's what exactly happens to me. Okay, all right. We have things set up, microphone set up, camera is set up, I can see myself. Am I in focus? Am I okay? Right now it's tracking my face, so we'll see how this goes. Phone on mute. And let us just begin. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is the Little Bean and Me podcast channel. My name is Kayleen and I'm your host and this is a small podcast about uh, crocheting, knitting, mostly yarn dyeing, spinning, all the fiber things that I've been up to, crafty things. It's been a hot minute since I've actually podcasted, uh, mostly because, well, my daughter wasn't in camp for a few weeks so I had very little time <laughs> to actually sit aside and do some podcasting. So. Um, welcome. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope that you're enjoying the setup still. Um, I'm back in my living room because Tucker's napping-ish. He's not down here and Cece's at school, so we're set to go. So uh, welcome back if you're a returning viewer and a big warm welcome from us to you if you're a new viewer. Uh, this is a fun episode. I hope you guys enjoy it because today is my one year anniversary. Yay! <laughs> so I started, oh, sorry if I hit the table and that was something crazy. Ah! Um, so I started this podcast one year ago and it was just a way for me to share what I was doing and I've kept up with it, which I'm really happy about. And I think you guys have all enjoyed some of the content that I've been able to provide for you. So it's one year. So I'm going to have some things to talk about, about this um, in a little while, but first, let's get to some crafty stuff, shall we? Um, <laughs> so, last week I talked to you guys about, um, let's see, my exploration station, that's the word I'm looking for, um, some socks that I was working on, um, and then some yarn that I dyed last week, but it was also a live stream, so the quality was much, much lower than what it is right now, because I'm filming here on my, uh, nice point-and-shoot camera, but my webcam on my laptop is not as good as this camera, nor is the audio, because the microphone is not the same. I can't use, or I used this microphone, but it wasn't, it didn't improve the audio over the live stream. Oh well, you live and learn. So hopefully I can do some more live streams for you guys. I really found that fun. Um, it kind of gave a different feel to a podcast as long as I can get a good setup and I'm not looking like pasty pale in this dark room winding up yarn like a yarn troll or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that and I hope to see you guys sticking around. We've recently hit 1,200 subscribers which is unbelievable to me. It's unbelievable. So I just want to say a huge shout out and thank you to all the subscribers. Somehow I'm doing something right and I'm not quite sure what it is, but I hope you guys are enjoying. So um, thank you so much for continuing to support my channel, for tuning in every time I'm uploading, which is usually weekly. Lately not so much, but usually weekly. And um, yeah, even checking out or sharing my shop or checking me out on Instagram. Um, as always, I try to put things on the screen for you so you know where to find me, but most often you can find me as Little Bean Crochet on Instagram. Um, and then also I have a website which is littlebeanlovedyarn.com um, or on Etsy as Little Bean Crochet. So anyway, anyway, so um, it's been a busy few weeks. We had some family trips that happened. Um, we went to Storyland. We um, had some time away and it was insane the kids had a blast but it was one of those things where I'm like am I insane for bringing two young children on a, a vacation yes uh survey would say yes <laughs> so um but we made some really nice memories so I was very happy about that um since then it's been a little bit of a chaos soup here where it's just like 
every single thing that could possibly happen and go wrong has gone wrong. You know, Cece's behavior has gotten a lot worse since she hasn't had the structure of school, like having that set schedule every single day. So for me as a mom, it's been <laughs> extremely stressful. Any of you moms or have been moms to small children know what I'm talking about where you don't understand what is happening in their brain. You know, like one second she's totally fine and happy and the moment that you have to like go to the bathroom or if you have to work like me, I do die yarn as my work. So if I'm trying to focus on getting social media posts or trying to edit a podcast or if I'm trying to do something along those lines, it always ends up being this crazy, you know, she starts hitting her brother and then her brother is crying and they're both running at me and I'm just like, I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't even know how to deal with it. So uh, thanks to everyone who has asked. I am okay. <laughs> I am slowly regaining my sanity with each day that goes by that CC is in camp. Today is day four of camp. So I am feeling a little bit more human, a little more normal, and feeling a little bit more back in my routine. And I'm super excited to be back here with you guys. So let's get into some crafting stuff. I I've been really trying to knit a lot and I've been trying to stitch. I haven't crocheted very much um, lately. I think I have one crochet work in progress, which was a simple scallop shawl, but I haven't worked on it um, in about a month. It's kind of just sat in the cupboard, you know? So um, there's that. But I do have a couple of things that I've been working on. So let me just show them to you right now. Okay, so first I am going to show this. This is in my... Um, utterly adorable knits bag. It's a little pink sheep, which I find to be so cute. Um, and I got this on a D-stash, brand new. Uh, so I was very excited for that because I always watch her updates and I never can get anything that I want to get. But this right now is housing my exploration station. So I cast this on a couple of weeks ago and I have not made a ton of progress since I showed you last week during the live stream, but I do want to show it to you here. Sorry. I'm sorry for that microphone. Um, <laughs> I do want to show it to you here because I am able to not drop all my stitches, number one. And number two, this is better lighting. So you can see a little more. I did not drop a stitch. Yay, okay, good, this is good, this is good, I didn't drop a stitch. I cannot really stretch it out too much, but I can show it to you. So I am currently working on the brioche section, so I'll show you here, hopefully without hitting the microphone. Here it is, okay. So you can see I'm working on the brioche section. The front is Ron Weasley, and the back side is Professor Sprout. So here it is, a nice shot of where I'm at. So I have made it through one full repeat of the brioche, so I'm starting the second repeat, and I think there are a total, including this one, one, two, two more times that I go through the brioche patterning um, cycle, so to speak, where I have some increases and things. But I haven't dropped anything. I've already started weaving in ends as I get to the end of the row, but I'll tell you what my colors are. So these are all my own hand dyed yarns. Um, this color is a deep brown black. It was, on, it's on Sparkle Sock and it was part, it was a leftover skein from um, the starting point, Mystery Knit Along. I dyed some kits for that. And so that's this color, I saved it for myself. So this is the color A. Color B is Ron Weasley, which is a navy and orange speckled wonder. Um, this is Professor Sprout, and then this is Lav Lav. It's hard to show the color. The microphone, the microphone is literally right here. And I don't know where else I can put it. It is a large microphone, so it's like, I'm having trouble right now. Ah, struggle bus, first world problems. So there's Lav, it is a, a mauve and navy with little yellow flecks. So Lab and Wan Wan are a nice little couple. So they are part of this and I chose to put the colors where I wanted them because the, I know you can do whatever you want with the pattern. You don't have to go by what the pattern says, like color A matches with B, C, you can do whatever you want. But because I've never 
knit such a large pattern before and I've never done brioche before and there's all these slip stitch um, patterns. I really just wanted to be able to follow the pattern and not really worry about which is color A, B, C, D or changing up which colors I wanted to use. So I laid them out that way so that in the brioche section would be this color and this color. In the slip stitch we'd have a nice contrast between this color and lav. And then for the nothing but knit is this color and Ron. So I thought it would be um, a nice way to do it. Anyway, anyway, so this is my exploration station. It's all crumpled up. I haven't had a chance to knit on it this week. I've started, I did start this row, but I started it doing the increase for the brioche, which is like a brioche yarn over brioche, like brioche knit, yarn over brioche knit in the same stitch. So it's just like, you know, knit front and back where you're knitting twice into the same space. But somehow I think I messed this up. So I have to make it to the end of the row, go back and do a stitch count to make sure that I've increased my stitches. Wish me luck. <laughs> I hope it works out, but I think it will. And if by the end of the section my stitch count is off, I will always just fudge one or two stitches. It's not a big deal. This is just a project for me. Um, I'm thinking that this will come with me to Rhinebeck and hopefully it will be finished so I'll be wearing it. So if you see me there, then you'll see me there. Oh, if you didn't know, I did announce that on the live stream, but that was toward the end of the live stream. But I am planning a trip to Rhinebeck. I'm rooming with a few yarn friends and I am so excited for that because it'll be my first real fiber festival to attend. I've attended other small craft festivals and the like, but I've never attended a proper fiber festival. So I'm very excited for that. So I don't think I'll have a sweater done by then, but I think I can get this shawl done by then. And so I'm hoping you guys have to hold me to it because I have to finish this shawl. I have to have something to wear to Rhinebeck so <laughs> something that's not just a t-shirt and jeans because that's generally what I wear all the time apologies if you can hear the neighbor if you can hear the rain for some reason people are deciding to mow their lawn in the rain trim hedges in the rain I'm not sure why maybe it's a marblehead thing I have no idea okay so <laughs> let's continue along here um let me show you the next work in progress that I have you guys have seen this before. This is something, um, it is in my feathers bag. This was a collaborative effort between myself and Lane over at Sunshine and Bubblegum. Um, this was the Flirt and Feathers self-striping kit. I think I have two left of this kit and it's on sale. So if you guys are interested in it, just go to the shop and check it out. You know where it is. Um, but right now I don't have my Flirt socks in here, but I do have Tyler's socks in here. Um, these are Jinx Yarns in the Rapture colorway. Oh no, oh no. Okay, don't panic. Don't panic, that's the key, right? Don't panic. When you put stuff away in haste, and then you pull things out like you know how it is, but you really don't. All right, I have one drop stitch, but I can easily pick that up. Okay, okay, okay. Woohoo, <laughs> that was a, that could have been really bad. I think I would have cried. Um, I'm not very good at picking up stitches. It's not hard to pick up stitches, but I'm not, I panic a lot. So I, I end up just overthinking what I'm doing and I do things wrong and then I get mad at myself. So, okay, let's continue to untangle this, shall we? Okay, all right, we're fully untangled. I drop stitches over here, by the way. So these are two at a time socks. They're 60 stitches with the Jinx Yarns colorway Rapture. It's a self-striping colorway. And I have made some progress since last time you saw this. So I showed this on the podcast last week on the live stream and I had only just gone to this green stripe here. So I've made a bit of progress. <laughs> Knit several rows on this, but the, this is the foot part. So I'm doing cuff down two at a time, magic loop method, and you can see it's it, the foot's going to go pretty quickly, I think, if I just buckle down. So the colorway is really pretty, and I did a fish lips kiss heel, which is an easy short row heel. If you don't have the pattern, you really should go get it. It's by Socks, S-O-X, Therapist on Ravelry, and it's like a dollar, and it really goes through the structure of a sock. It's really long. 
the actual pattern is less than half a page, but it goes through how you can make socks to fit your feet by using a cardboard cutout of your foot so you know where your hinge line is for your heel, how deep your heel is, how tall it is. So like you can make socks that fit your feet well if you have a problem with heat turning heels and ended up ending up with like a really baggy heel. These heels are very shallow so it's it's easier to stretch and um, fit your foot. So anyway, so I've made a bit of progress on these, not a ton, but enough. And again, I apologize for all the cars outside. For some reason, it was quiet. And now everybody decides they want to do all the things while I'm trying to record. So if you can't hear that, that means I've done a really good job in editing. <laughs> um, so I only have one more project that I was working on. It was a gift, or it is a gift, for a baby shower that I've already attended. She knows that it's not done. Uh, but it is a gift for my husband's cousin, Tori. Um, she is having a baby boy, and so I decided I wanted to knit her a blanket using my own hand-dyed yarn, so I pulled some skeins from the shop to use, and I wanted to show them to you now because I'm working them in, I think, a really fun way. So I'll show you in just one second. Okay, so this little project is sitting in this bag. This was made by Ashley of Fairy Tale Notions on Etsy. She gifted me this bag, which it's beautiful, by the way, I love this bag. It's very wide, has a nice wide opening, but it has this cool like vintage looking print on the inside, which I love. Anyway, so this is living in here. This is gonna be a four skein blanket. So I'm using four skeins of worsted yarn, of my own hand dyed yarn. And I am using two colorways and I'm alternating. So this is prongs and uni. And these skeins have just kind of been hanging out in my shop and I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna knit with them because why not? All right, so I am making a corner to corner type blanket and I am alternating every other, every other row, every two rows, every right side row. There we go. Every right side row is getting alternated in. So I, I just cast this on, I'm not using a pattern. I'm kind of making it up as I go along, which may bite me in the bum later, but I'm doing I-cord edging, because I didn't want to do garter edging. I feel like you always see garter edging. So I'm doing I-cord edging. I'm also used to doing it because of the exploration station. Um, and then every right side row, I'm alternating colors. So we get this really nice, subtle striping, but kind of blending of the speckles. Since they're two very different colorways. One is really warm, one is really cool, one is lighter, one is darker. And so I'm hoping this will block out a bit. I've been a little tight, I feel, on the needles knitting this, and I don't want to start it over, so I'm just going to continue along as if nothing is wrong. Um, but yeah, so this is the front. I almost like the wrong side more, but it's a really cool way to use both like two different colored speckled yarns to blend them. So this should move pretty quickly in terms of, you know, how much I can get done in a week if I really buckle down and knit on it. Normally I do a linen stitch crochet blanket for babies, but I really wanted to do something knit as a change. Big mistake on my part. Let's take a poll. Was this a mistake to make a knit project? Because Kayleen can't finish any projects. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is bringing me a lot of joy to knit on this and um, kind of knitting it a lot with love and thought to the baby and for Tori and hopefully that everything goes well for her when she has the baby. So that is my last work in progress. So let's talk about dye work and other fiber related type work. Um, I've been spinning a little bit. I didn't bring my bobbins over here, but I've been spinning on the bump from um, Misty Mountain Makers, from Emily over at Misty Mountain Makers. She had gifted me a couple of bumps of fiber, and one is going to be given away, but one I am spinning on, and it's just kind of going along. I just pull the spinning wheel out anytime I want to spin, pick it up, put it down. I'm not going to stress about how thin it is or how precise I am because I just want to have it be a very relaxing kind of thoughtless spin or relax kind of like potato chippy or you know just kind of just gonna spin and spin and spin and not think about it because I need to like be out of my brain lately so um, that's what I've been working on there 
in terms of dyeing. I've dyed a lot of yarn in the last few weeks and there's a lot still in the shop. I also did some felting and I also dyed some fibers. So let me show you that stuff now. Okay. <laughs> I am dropping everything. Okay, so I've done some felting. Yay! So I made some wool felted dryer balls. I was able to get my hands on a ton of wool yarn from Michaels during one of their crazy, you know, mid-year sales, which I was not very happy about the whole shipping process and how they process my order. I was a little T.O.'d about that, but um, I've never ordered this much stuff from Michaels in my life. So I ordered a lot of wool, like the roving style wool yarn and also the regularly applied wool. I think it was the Patton's, um, Patton's yarns, but I decided as part of my Kayleen will not jump off a bridge today projects to do some wool felting um, and have Cece help me because if I was not going to murder my own child, I was going to have her help me do something really fun and something really colorful. So uh, these balls are 50 grams a piece. They're a pretty decent sized ball. They're about the size of a tennis ball. I do have I think about a hundred of them up in the Etsy shop right now. So if you need wool dryer balls, they're all up there. But I wound them up, put them in the stocking so I could wet felt them, and Cece helped me get them all squared away and take them out of the stockings and put them away in the box. So I have a ton of balls here. I was very excited to do it because it was something I didn't have to think of. I didn't really have to, you know, worry too much about the shape of it. I wasn't worried about you know, how many stitches or dropping stitches or dyeing or anything. So it was a really fun, really, <laughs> I'm totally dropping all these things. Um, really fun and relaxing type activity to do with CC. So I have some of these up for you guys if you want them. I use wool balls all the time. In the dryer, I always have, you know, a bunch of them in there to kick around my laundry. So. There you go. Then I dyed some comb top, which I'm gonna show you right now. First, I'm gonna take it out of the crinkly bag. You're welcome. So I purchased some undyed Targi wool top from Port Fiber, which is a local, um, local yarn shop or fiber shop up in Maine, in Portland, Maine, which is somewhat local to me in New England. So I follow her on Instagram, and if you don't, you should, because she's really awesome. Casey is really funny. <laughs> and uh, she posts a lot of, like, dancing videos and kind of, like, off-the-cuff, like, little Instagram stories. That's what they're called, Instagram stories. So I enjoy following her a lot. So if you don't follow her, you should definitely go follow her at Port Fiber. But I bought some undyed Targi top, and so I decided I was going to dye them. My foot is asleep. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I bought some undyed Targi top and I was going to dye it and so that's what I did and oh my goodness it is so soft. This is the result of my dye. I did not dye it in a braid. I just braided it up to store it but I dyed it in a gradient kind of fashion starting from some purples going into blues and grays and then ending in some greens and brighter kind of blues. I think this was a peacock blue, some sage. Yeah, 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 yeah. So excited, so excited. It's such a fun um, thing and I was able to keep the braids really lofty. I didn't compact the fibers at all so I was very proud of myself on that because I never have dyed. I mean I dyed a little bit I want to say a year ago on some fiber when I first started spinning but it was just as an experiment. It wasn't um I didn't know how to handle the fiber yet. I didn't felt it, but I didn't know, you know, how you were supposed to tie things off or anything like that. So I felt like I really, from dyeing yarn for this entire year, really have a better understanding and capability. So I was able to dye this. Um, I haven't decided if I want to list it for sale or not. I have three braids, three four ounce braids. Um, but yeah. So this is it in all its glory. Um, or if I'm going to keep it for myself and spin it for myself because it's so lovely. <laughs> but if I'm being realistic, I don't have enough space to have a huge stash and 
I don't know how much time I'm able to dedicate to spinning, so maybe I'll just keep one braid for myself and pop the rest in the shop, but I haven't decided. But anyway, anyway, why don't you tell me? Tell me down below. Should I post this or should I keep it? <laughs> All right, back in the crinkly bag. Back in one second. You know when things just smell woolly and delicious? Like that's what my living room smells like right now. It's just woolly and delicious. My husband, so side note, um, because I've been feeling really down and like having a hard time lately. Um, I haven't, I didn't die a lot because Cece's home and I can't do all these things when I have like this chaos happening. So a couple Sundays ago, I was able to do my first back to the dye pots kind of dye where I spent like the entire day dying and Tyler took the kids out and he was the one dealing with them the entire day. And he came home and he said to me, and it almost made me cry, but he's like, you know, you really did it. I was like, what, what did I do? And he said, you made me really love the smell of wool. It makes me so happy. And he's like, I know it makes you happy to dye wool and you're always happier when you're doing it. And it makes me happy to see you so happy. You know, it's just, it's something that's missing when you're not doing it. And it makes me feel so happy kind of thing. I'm paraphrasing. I don't remember exactly what he said to me, but it was that kind of a sentiment. And it really just touched me because it really does bring me a lot of joy. And I'm glad that he sees it as that and not just as a nuisance that I have like die dye canisters all over our kitchen or like drying racks up in the spare room or just like this entire clutter just hanging out on the dining room table or packaging materials everywhere you know he knows and he associates wool with happiness and I I do too and I'm really feeling thankful and happy that I have somebody who thinks that and supports me and I just love him <laughs> I just love him so much so anyway tangent done what is this what is that? I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know. Don't ask me. I don't even know. Okay, so let's get to other dyeing things. Um, I've dyed a bunch of speckled yarns that are up. A lot of it is on everyday sock, and I'm going to show you some of them. Now, I also have some sock blanks, and also I have a new collaboration with Lynn at Sunshine and Bubblegum that I've been working on and is now up for pre-order. So if you're interested in shop update stuff and dyed yarn stuff, oh, yes, so stay tuned for that. First, before I do that, <laughs> I didn't come with notes today. I did have one question. It, it has to do with dyeing, so that's why I'm going to put it right here in my Ask Me Anything thread. And if you don't know, I do have an Ask Me Anything thread in the Ravelry group. So if you search the groups tab on Ravelry for Little Bean and Me podcast, you'll find the group. Come join over. We're pretty quiet, and that's okay. Um, but you should come over and see. And there's an introductory thread and an Ask Me Anything thread. So anyway, there are those two threads, and you can put your stuff there. For questionings, questionings. So for questionings for me, uh, questions for me, or um, if you want to introduce yourself to some other folks, then you can do that too. Um, so anyway, this question is from Lori, Z O R R I, uh, and I, it doesn't show her like name. But anyway, okay, so this question is from Vori, and the lighting just got extremely bright. Now you can see how splotchy my face really is. Um, she says, what is your favorite base and weight to dye? Um, that is a great question. Thank you so much for asking. Uh, my favorite, <sighs> this is really hard. So I, I enjoy dyeing on all bases. I really, 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 really love dyeing on my MCN base because the colors just strike and they they are so vibrant and just they hit and it's there and it's just textured and lovely and just I just love the feel of the base. I love how the dye strikes the base and it's just one of my favorite bases ever, which I have to get more because I haven't been able to dye on in a while. Um, but I like dyeing on most bases. As a crocheter, I love worsted base or DK. I've been dying a lot on DK lately. I finally, I had like six bags of DK dyes, like literally 60 undyed skeins on DK sitting in my dye room space, let, left, left to the, the will of the world, I guess. It just was sitting there. Um, so I finally started dying on that this week and I am loving it. And it's coming up to that season too. So like sweater season, I'm doing heavier garments, hats, gloves, that whole 
whole spiel, so I'm looking to dive more on some more Sid and DK bases as the months go on um, for the year, you know, for seasonal stuff. But I enjoy dyeing on a lot of things, anything. Anything that will take color that's going to look really cool, I really enjoy it. Um, so I ask you guys that question. What is your favorite uh, base and weight to work with? What is your favorite base to work with? Do you like MCNs? Do you like silks? Do you like fingering weight? Do you like bulky weight, worsted weight? Are you a crochet or knitter? Tell me below. Use it in the comment section. Start a conversation with someone. Um, let's talk about the things we love to do. So uh, I'm gonna go adjust this shade so I'm not looking so intense right now because I'm looking pretty intense. And then we're gonna get into some shop update stuff in one second. Okay, I lied. I lied. I lied a little bit. We're going to do a little acquisition because I didn't really get a chance to show this acquisition because I got it last week after I did the live stream. So I'm going to show you this acquisition. I don't like to buy yarn for myself because in all honesty, I don't have a lot of time to knit. But there are some dyers. Like I'm a dyer, so I dye yarn. I like the yarn I dye. I love the way it looks and all that. But like some dyers are on like my bucket list to get skeins from. So I've had gotten some woolen vine yarns, I've gotten some jinx yarns, I've gotten, you know, just a bunch of other dyers. But Hugh Loco, so Nicole from Hugh Loco, I have been eyeing some of her yarns for a while. And she was one of the people, because of her tutorials on YouTube, that really inspired me to start dyeing and to kind of keep at it and experiment and learn about colors and how how it all works so I wanted to buy some of her yarns to show support for her so I have two skeins on Phyllis which is her fingering weight base sock base 7525 um, this is the real teal and this one is rowdy mermaid which is a lot darker than I thought it was going to be so I'm interested to see how this knits up um, and then this one is on her cashmere base, which is an 801010. It's a two ply, so it's a little springier. Um, mine is a four ply, I think. And this is called Patina. So I was able to score these skeins. I was really looking for yarns that went together or yarns that I could make socks from. So this is it. Um, this is it. So I was thinking about putting one of these maybe patina into a giveaway so she does a lot of speckled yarns sort of kind of like how I dye how I like to dye as well and so I'd be interested also to see how these crochet up um, but anyway mm, they're so lovely okay so let's get to shop update stuff now okay we're gonna get to shop update stuff I'm not gonna okay there's nothing else that I was looking to talk about so let's just get into it Oh, there was one more thing. There was one more thing. <sighs> okay, I lied. This is another dying. <laughs> well, I guess this has to do with dying. So I did show this on the live stream. If you didn't tune in for that, this was kind of like toward the middle of the live stream. But I did get myself some silk. Um, this is yak silk. There we go. Brain. It is a lace weight. You can see all these white ties are just dye ties because, long story short, I had to reskein them because the ties that were on the yarn itself were too tight. Um, and then this yarn is so incredibly delicate that it kept breaking. So a lot of these skeins have knots in them. These are not yarns that I'm going to sell. The aim for these yarns was to be dyed and then knit up or crocheted up into, um, well, crocheted up into the Maritime Coast cardigan because that calls for a yarn weight similar to this. Um, and to wear it for Rhinebeck because this color is like my color. This is the color that I wear all fall, which is like this berry wine kind of brown, red. It's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. I love it. So I dyed these up as tonals for myself. That was it. That was it. All right, yarn update. So like I said, I've been dyeing up on DK. Um, so the colors that I dyed up this past week on DK were Luna. So Luna is really delicately speckled. It's pinks and a blue toned violet, which it looks more blue than violet, but it really is a blue violet. And then some warm yellow. 
So there's some photos on Instagram that I've been tagged in that I'm going to share once she's done with the sweater. Um, but Craft All the Things on Instagram has been working on a child's um, Find Your Fade sweater, but it's not fading, it's just using Luna in my Simple Sock base, and it looks beautiful, so I'm going to share that. But this is his mother's eyes, which is a blue, blue green. It's like a sage and <laughs> I can't remember which blue it is off the top of my head. But I used a blue, it breaks purple. Here we go. And sage. So I wanted to use blue and green because in the movies his eyes are blue and in the books his eyes are green. And then I have some kind of wheat colored speckles in there as well for interest. So this is his mother's eyes. Again, a nice light colored yarn. Now it's too dark in here. I closed that blind and now it's way too dark. Now there's too much light coming from this window. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Um, there we go. Okay. And then this one is Ron Weasley. So again, it is a speckled yarn. It's got navies and orange and kind of like a deeper maroon or ruddy, ruddy type brown, red brown. So that is Ron Weasley. And these are so squishy. So this is on my new um, DK base. I'm gonna have to open that blind again. This is crazy. Um, my new DK base, which is 115 grams. It's very soft, very squishy, very, um, you know, you just wanna sit here and just feel it <laughs> in a very PG manner. <laughs> um, but it takes dye really nicely. And it's a nice compromise if you don't like something as heavy as worsted or bulky, using a nice DK weight can be quite satisfying. So I have those three colors up right now on Merino DK. And now let's show some fingering weight yarn, shall we? <laughs> so I have a lot in the shop right now. I'm not going to show you everything that's in there. I know I haven't done a proper update in a while, but I, I mean, in terms of like, the podcast showing you guys like what I've dyed during the week and what will be in the shop. So I'm going to show you a few from my previous update and a few from the update I did a couple um, days ago because a couple of them are new colorways. So some of the yarns that I have up right now are Divination, which is kind of two tones of gray, some blue and purple, all speckled in. Quite nicely. I have some Don't Call Me Nymphadora, which is vibrant. It is one of the most vibrant colors I dye. Fluorescent pinks and chartreuse, violet, gray, a purple, like a purpley pink, red. I don't know what to call it. Um, it's like a red purple. Then we have the classic M. Hortensia, which was a violent Valentine's Day color. You know, I have to get used to this new setup. I have a new tripod. So it's plum and a cool tone pink and an aubergine kind of all speckled in together. So this is Amortentia. And this was something that I dyed up starting Valentine's Day this year. So these were from the previous update. I still have a bunch of these in the shop. Oh, this looks really nice together. I kind of like that. I kind of like that, okay. And then in terms of new colorways, I already showed you his mother's eyes, but I also dyed it up on Everyday Sock. This isn't labeled yet, but um, I dyed this on Everyday Sock a couple days ago. So you can see there's that blue and sage kind of blended together and that kind of weedy wheat, 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 uh, wheat yellow. Um, and then I have two Game of Thrones colors. So the new season of Game of Thrones has started and I cannot get enough of it. I'm so excited to see where the story goes and finishes because the books aren't out yet. So I can't listen or read to them, read them, listen to them or read them. And, um, so I am very excited to just continue watching the show. I already started binge watching it before the season started, <laughs> um, in my spare time. So, um, this one is mother of dragons so we have some blacks and reds some kind of red tone browns in here and some yellow golden yellow 
So this is the Mother of Dragons. It's on a, you know, a light base. And Daenerys is very fair haired, fair skinned. So I didn't want to do it too dark in terms of the color work. So you can see all the speckles in there. It's very speckly and a very high contrast speckled yarn, which is hard to do on a light base, like to continue to have a light base, but to um, have such dark speckles, especially black speckles are difficult to do, but these are black. It is a true black, not gray. See the black speckles. And then the last color I dyed was R plus L equals J. And if you, so last season the big reveal was that Jon Snow is Lyanna's son that she had with Rhaegar Targaryen. So Rhaegar plus Lyanna equals Jon, R plus L equals J. And it was one of the largest fan theories surrounding Game of Thrones, which was something that I always believed to be the case that was going to be what happened um, in the story and I was right. <laughs> I was right. Um, so R plus L equals J is a nod to that fan theory which happens to be true. So this color is a base of light gray and a cool blue kind of you know the stark winter is coming and then black and a dark kind of red purple tone of brown. So it's almost like dark red and black uh, for the Targaryen line, I guess. So R plus L equals J. So these three are newer, and these just went into the shop um, yesterday. And then the last thing that I've been working on is a secret, not so secret project with Lynn of Sunshine and Bubblegum. Um, I did the feathers bag with her but she had purchased some lovely watermelon fabric. And I thought, what better way to continue summer because hello Target, it's not back to school yet. It's not even August yet. So cool it with the back to school. What better way to keep summer going than with a nice watermelon themed yarn. So I was feeling in a sock blank mood so I decided to make it into a sock blank. So this is watermelon. W-H-A-T-T-A, -T -T -A, watermelon. And this one is a double, so that you can make two matching socks from this. Um, see how it's dyed? <laughs> it's hard to show, it's so long. Uh, but it goes from green tones, all different shades of green, fades to kind of like a creamy white, pink, and then goes into deep and vibrant pinks and reds, and some black as well for contrast. Also for the seeds of the watermelon, um, I did I did over dye this, so I had my first version one, and then I was like, no, this has to be punched up. So this is so long. Look at it. Boom. So I have these up for pre-order. So you get the bag and the yarn together, and you can choose your sock blank. So you can have it on a double knit sock blank or a single knit sock blank. And then you can either choose one color transition, so it goes from green to pink, or you can have the double transition from green to pink to green. Um, and if you order, if you wanted a single transition, or I mean, if you wanted a single knit sock blank, I am offering up a free caking service. So if you've been following along with me for quite some time, then you know that I'm not entirely a fan of working directly with a sock blank, so unraveling it as I go. Uh, I love dyeing on them, and I love working with them when they're unraveled. So I am, I showed a little bit on my Instagram about how I unwind, relax, and then work with sock blanks. So I am offering that to you for free. So if you don't necessarily like working with a sock blank, that you can still purchase this and work with it, but I will unravel it for you, relax it for you, and then either give it to you in a skein or a hank, I mean a skein or a cake, depending on what you want to, how you want to work with it. Um, because I know not everybody knows how to work with a sock blank or likes to work with a sock blank as it is. But the gradients that come out of this are beautiful, they're speckled, they're gorgeous. Um, you can make socks out of it, you can, anything you can make with fingering weight yarn, you can make from 
something like this. So um, anyway, so if it tickles your fancy, go check out the uh, pre-orders. The pre-orders will be open until I think Friday this week, we decided. Um, if there's a lot of interest coming for the weekend, then I will leave it up through Sunday. But they these will all ship uh, before on or before August 22nd. So Lynn will send me her bags for the amount that we sell during pre-orders and then um, I will <laughs> anyway I have the yarn she's gonna send me the bags and everything's going out for me so it's going through my shop to you guys so yeah so here's a nice shot of the gradient so this is what it would look like if it was a single and then obviously the double goes back so you get similar similar socks <sighs> I always feel like I am <laughs> not going to record this huge long podcast but every 15 minutes my camera like stops to process the footage because I film in full high definition um and so now that I've restarted the camera four times I'm thinking I'm coming up on an hour of just talking about things <laughs> and so I want to say if you've stuck around this far thank you <laughs> um I hope you've enjoyed the podcast thus far I only have one more thing to talk about, so if you can hang in there just for a few more minutes, it um, would be great. It's going to be about the giveaways. So for my one-year anniversary, um, I did want to do something special. I didn't want to miss out on this opportunity to film and celebrate with you guys. So um, I am going to be opening up some threads in the Ravelry group. I haven't done it yet. I have to take, I have to make sure I have the photos and of the packages that I want to give away, but I'm going to give away a ton of yarn. I'm going to give away some of my yarn, some of the yarn that I've purchased, some of the things that have been given to me that I've been kind of stockpiling and just sitting in my space here um, to give away to you guys as a thank you for my one year anniversary, for following along, for subscribing, for hanging in there with me. Um, I wanted to show some appreciation that way. So keep your eyes peeled in the Ravelry group, which is the Little Bean and Me podcast. If you search in the groups tab, as always, the links are in the doobly, as Wheezy Waiter says, the doobly doo, the doobly doo, -doo the doobly doo, -doo um, down below. And uh, that's really about it. That's really about it. I'm just going to stop talking. I'm going to try and edit this and get it done before the kids are, before Tucker's up from nap, which I hope I can at least get it edited before he's up from nap. And then we have to go get Cece at school. So, uh, yeah, yeah, what a crazy week. What a crazy week. I hope you guys have a good week. Enjoy the summer. Uh, hopefully I'll see you guys next week. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope that I'm back into the groove of things. Um, if there's anything that you'd like to see of me on this channel, if you have a suggestion for content that you would like, you're always welcome to leave a comment here. You can always leave it in the Ravelry group as well. I do check it uh, regularly, even though it's a very quiet group. And um, yeah, that's really about it. Stay positive. Have a wonderful summer. School will be starting soon. Not yet, but soon. Uh, so if you're a parent hanging in there, just keep hanging in. Keep hanging in with me. We can make it. <laughs> All right, have a wonderful week, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.